We are back. Andrew Capone, who's got the action. Caleb Knight taking a stand. Great opportunity uh, this week with three of the final derby prep races before the wild card race. Uh, we're out. Go ahead now to Santa Anita, California, for what I would say is not my favorite uh, race to handicap. And in the, the state of Cali racing right now, it seems like it's par for the course. Any thoughts before we go through the races, uh, horses here, Caleb? Any thoughts on California racing in general and, and these field sizes that we keep on seeing come out? Yeah, I think it's a little disappointing. You get too many of these short fields that have two or three horses that are trained by the same guy or, you know, maybe not necessarily in name, but are effectively trained by the same guy as Baffert has transferred a couple of his runners to other barns for this race. So I think it's it's a little disappointing. It, it doesn't make for a great betting experience or betting opportunity. Not my favorite derby prep, but uh, we'll It'll be fun to see uh, the matchup between the big two, to say the least. Anyway, if maybe not necessarily the best, uh, the best race to bet on. Yeah, I agree. We got a great field of six here. Um, it's small, but it, there, there's some some runners in here. Um, great field of two. I mean, six. Sorry, there's uh, there there is six horses going to the starting gate, but they're going on here, going one and one eighth of a mile. Santa Anita race number six, five thirty p.m. this Saturday. So let's take a look and run through this. Uh, I think it should be interesting. Again, uh, I'm in the camp. This is a two-horse race, and I think that this race sort of decides who you like coming out of California or, in general, who you like coming off the West Coast for this derby. Um, this is sort of like uh, eliminating picks for me as I say, as I like to look at it. As we come to the derby, I always look, have the 20 horses. I like to cut myself down to five but cut about a week out, and this is a race that's really going to help me make that justification. So I'll start off with the one here, Happy Jack. Comes out of a third place finish in the San Felipe. Looks again a third place type of horse. One of two for Doug O'Neill in this race. Um, this horse would need a hop, skip, jump, and leap forward to be in the mix here. Um, I think this horse is going to get run off its feet. Uh, not any interest of me to be playing. This horse is a complete toss for me. What did you think of uh, the two here? One of our one runner that uh, could be interesting in the spot. Yeah, I think that I probably see the race similar to you is it, it feels like a match race between the two short priced horses, but number two, uh, you know, Armagnac, this is a one of three, I believe, uh, Bob effort, Bob effort, refugee kind of horses here. Um, I, I tried to make a case for him in the San Felipe last out. And I looked somewhat foolish in that race. Uh, he just didn't run a step. You know, he's kind of run two poor races, one decent race, he's not going to get the lead here and he seems like a horse that doesn't really want to pass other horses. I have just no idea how this horse could win this race. And, uh, he's not going to be on any of my tickets. He'd be a pretty big surprise. I think number three forbidden kingdom. So this is another horse that I wasn't totally on board with in the San Felipe. I thought that he might have some distance limitations given the bottom of his pedigree is very sprint oriented. And uh, that was the second time in that race that I was wrong, <laughs> where Forbidden Kingdom absolutely blew the doors off that field. He set fast fractions, and he just cruised to a comfortable victory there. I think that he's a huge player in this race. I think that he's going to make the lead. I think he is a little bit one-dimensional, so I don't think they're really going to play around with trying to rate him or anything in this spot. And he's done everything he's been asked so far. He was beaten by Messier three starts back, but I definitely think he's improved significantly since then. And he does have a bit of a recency edge on Messier as well. So I think Forbidden Kingdom is definitely the horse to catch and arguably the horse to beat. But uh, I think the horse to his immediate outside might have something to say about that. So what do you think of the number four, Messier? Uh, that recency thing I'll, I'll talk about in a second, but I agree with you there. Messier, this bad for, I mean, sorry, Yakutin trained horse. Um, is one of two contenders of the race. 15 like winner of the Robert B. Lewis, um, even money line favorite here, Hall of Famer Johnny V up. Uh, what can you say bad about this horse? Horse has the uh, highest buyer of all three year olds um, right now, as written. Uh, and you know, in this field, it's interesting. We have uh, we have the the on the outside we have the second, I believe, highest um, of the year for three year olds. So you know, the horse is going to be good here. It's going to be a one two race. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to be the winner. I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I think this uh, this horse is going to be a very good horse someday. I don't know if it's going to be a derby horse for me. Um, coming out of Baffert, I can 
wonder to see if it's really going to uh, continue running like it was when it was under Baffert's. Um, but a horse that's going to be, again, a one-two match race here, and I don't think there's going to be any value in any of the exotics, so it's sort of a pass for me. Um, moving to the five, win for the day. Over his head here, second Doug O'Neill. Um, I think Doug O'Neill's just trying to pick up money for the barn at this point. Horse hasn't seen this level of racing before. Doesn't have the speed to even stay with them in the first quarter mile. Um, this is pretty much when I was asking you before, this type of horse is what I call like the current state of Cali racing. People entering horses like this just so they can run and hopefully pick up a piece and, and get some purse out of it. I'm not interested in this horse at all. Um, and why don't you round out our field here? Yeah, I totally agree with you. As far as the number six goes, uh, Taiba, this is a horse that I think is going to take a respectable amount of money. And I have no interest in, to be honest. Um, it probably isn't that bold taking a stand against a four to one horse, but I think that, you know, after Forbidden Kingdom and Messier, that's the horse people are going to default to. And I, mostly I just don't believe the figure. I don't think it's representative of what that race came back as. Now he did win by seven lengths. So perhaps he could have done a little better, but uh, the ra horses that he beat that day earned really good figures that haven't really seemed to have checked out. Uh, the second place horse, uh, Meridius, you know, came back and ran terrible, actually regressed 31 points on time for him. The third and fourth place finishers also came back and regressed about 10 points on time for him each. So I think that that figure is probably a little too high. I'm not expecting him to be able to repeat that. I don't think he's going to get the lead in here with the likes of Forbidden Kingdom. Johnny Velasquez hops off. So the, to me, there's enough reasons to not be excited to take this horse as he probably a relatively short priced third horse in a small field. So you know, if, if you feel differently, I mean, the horse was visually impressive, but there's way too many questions for me to back this horse at a relatively short price, given the two horses inside of him that he's going to have to beat. Yeah, that's our field, a uh, short little field here for the Santa Anita Derby. Um, my top pick is Forbidden Kingdom. I was on the horse last time. People question the distance issue. Watch those five furlong workouts. No issues at all. Horse showed out last time that no issue, and it gets to a top speed and keeps going. Keeps that top speed where it's sort of demoralizing for horses. The further they get back, they can't really even even get close enough. Um, and I think the horse just walks them around here. I'm forced to bet on this race because we did the show, but nothing excites me about the Santa Anita Derby. I see no value in any of the exotics. Uh, I think these two are going to be on top, and there's not going to be many much to do with it. Um, I don't even think you can try to play cute and and put them both in first and then keep them out of the rest of your tries and somebody gets pulled up or something. But that's maybe the only opportunity there that you, you can sort of drive some value that uh, one of these two finishes off the board in a trifecta. But I just don't necessarily see it. Forbidden Kingdom is going to be my horse here. Uh, and most likely if I had to pick a horse coming out of California for this derby trail, it most likely would be Forbidden Kingdom. Again, getting to that top speed and just holding it the entire time. Uh, he gets that top speed within the first 16th of a mile, and you don't see that very often from horses. Uh, who's your top pick here? Yeah, I think Forbidden Kingdom is you know, certainly a, a stud and very well uh, the horse to beat in here. I would probably have him and Messier about equal, to be honest. So for the sake of argument, I'll take the four Messier. Um, I do think Forbidden Kingdom is an extremely talented horse. As far as Messier goes, uh, he did beat Forbidden Kingdom, and maybe he just doesn't really care for Los Al. His two worst races of his career have come at Los Al, and he's undefeated between San Anita and Del Mar. There's a huge question mark as far as what does he do outside of the Baffert barn, as well as what does he do on the heels of that absolutely monstrous performance that he had in the RB Lewis, you know, running a race that would make him competitive for older horse grade one races right now in February of his three-year-old season. So there is a big risk that he goes backwards off that. Um, but I think that he probably is a little bit more proven and a little bit more versatile than Forbidden Kingdom, especially if Mike Smith is intent on getting Taiba out to the lead. I think Messier has a little bit more versatility and is probably a little better suited for the distance. So uh, I'll take a shot with him, but I really do think it's a two-horse race and it's almost a coin flip. So no long shot for you either? No long shot for me here either. Um, I would be very surprised if one of those two horses does not win. So that's what we got. Field of six for the Santa Anita Derby this Saturday, April 9th, race number six, 530 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, 
grade one. Let's see what happens. Grade ones with six horses in it. Not too often you see that besides in California. We ask you to like and subscribe. Hit that smash. Smash that like button. Uh, smash that subscribe button. That way you get involved every time we have a Road to the Derby video pops up or any video from Horse Racing Nation. We'll have one more video coming out this week for the final Derby prep, the Bluegrass. Uh, thanks for listening.